All right, Jedi Council, I am joined here by a very special guest. She is a host of the Star Wars show on the Star Wars YouTube channel and StarWars.com. Andy Gutierrez is here. Hello, Andy. Hey, how's it going? Good. It's nice to finally talk to you in person. I know that you and I have kind of gone back and forth on social media, but uh, it's nice to finally talk to you in person. Yeah, definitely. It's always nice to put faces to names and such. This is true. Um, so first, I got to say, we just we just watched the episode today of the Star Wars show, and we noticed that Collider made the cut on the Rogue One trailer. That's awesome. Thank you for putting us in there. Yeah, I was going to ask. It was awesome. It was a great reaction. Uh, we were we were super super excited that trailer man I mean I'm gonna get into that with you in a second because I'm I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on the Rogue One trailer but I wanted to kind of get into your love for Star Wars and kind of how you got involved in Star Wars because I think and you probably able to talk on this too but for me as a Star Wars fan you can always tell when someone is legit Star Wars fan or someone's just kind of saying oh yeah I like those Wookies and guys with white helmets thing but you are like a legit Star Wars fan like you bleed it you can tell like where did your love for Star Wars come from it's my life um, you know my, my dad introduced me to Star Wars when I was a kid um, we had Return of the Jedi on the laser disc Wow <laughs> yeah and uh, he, he thought I would really like the Ewoks you know they're cute cuddly I was a little girl um but i was all about yoda i was obsessed with yoda um and that was kind of where it started um you know when the let's see was it the prequels or was it the special editions when taco bell did like the promotional toys and i got this little figure yoda he didn't do anything it was just a plastic yoda and it's kind of all you need yeah yeah and i carried it around with me all the time it was like my lucky charm um i don't know where that went but you know, it, it started young, and it, I'd say my Star Wars fandom was a slow burn. I was pretty casual um, for most of my life, and then it started picking up. Obviously, you know, when I came here, it's my life. I live, eat, breathe, sleep, everything Star Wars. So Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, So you get involved in, uh, in Lucasfilm. Like, how did that come about Like, as far as going, getting the job, knowing that you wanted to be part of Lucasfilm, and then finally getting it, and kind of what your experience has been since you have started working at Lucasfilm? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't something that I, I set out to do. I didn't really think it was an option, really. Um, I had moved to San Francisco to work in advertising. I had had a massive streak of bad luck and had been laid off and uh, was interviewing for jobs through this temp agency and one day they called me and asked if I like Star Wars. And I said, yeah, of course, obviously. And uh, yeah, got the job like that week. Um, and it's just been the most amazing, absolutely most amazing of my life. So there is definitely such a thing as luck. Um, and yeah, I've just been so fortunate to be here. Yeah, you can tell. Even on the like the Rebels recap and recon, everything you guys, the, what you're doing over there, it just there seems to be like this pure excitement and joy. I mean, even when you look at the reactions from just fans in general who are watching Rogue One, but then you watch kind of what you guys are doing over there and listening. And I can't remember what interview it was. And I'm pretty sure it was on your show, but it was it was talking to Lucasfilm employees, just like how could I get bored talking Star Wars? The question always comes: Don't you get bored of talking Star Wars? It's impossible, I think, because. I'm, I do it every week, once a week. You guys are just in it all the time. And it just must be so much fun over there. It really is. I, I always wonder if there's, like, if I've ever hit peak Star Wars. You know, I come and I talk about Star Wars today. And then I go home and my boyfriend's like, you want to watch a movie? I'm like, yeah, how about, how about you know, A New Hope? I love that movie. Let's watch it. And he's like, we just watched it last week. There's, it's never enough. Um, well, and I feel like that's how a lot of people are here. And I think that's why what we do at least at StarWars.com, comes off as so genuine and, and people hopefully enjoy it. Um, it's because we are really just big fans and we do really just enjoy talking about Star Wars every day and we want to make fun things that we would want to watch if we were on the other side of the screen. Sure. sure. Well, let's talk let's about some of that big of fun there where you have uh, Celebration. Star Wars Celebration is something. Like you, I know that you covered Star Wars Celebration last year. I believe that. Yeah. yeah okay. And and then is this was this your second or your third one that you've covered? This was the second one that we've covered. Okay. Um, so Celebration this year. What were because you were on the floor? Obviously, you were guiding everyone through the live stream from start to finish, and I can I could feel your exhaustion by the end of it. Um, God bless you for you guys doing that for that entire time. Thank you. But like as far as what was your overall experience 
at Celebration. Did you feel like the fans there, they got it, they got all the Star Wars love, and how did you feel about the overall presentation of everything? Celebration's probably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. Um, you know, I kind of always go into it meeting like, there's no way I could love Star Wars more. And then after meeting fans and talking to people, you know, all weekend, you you leave kind of charged up and like your batteries are completely refilled. And I left feeling so inspired. And I think it's because, you know, obviously doing the show is a ton of fun and really exhausting and I will never do the it in heels again. That was a really poor <laughs> choice. Um, but, you know, meeting all of these fans from all over the world who just want to come and talk about Star Wars and like share their love and everyone's on the same page and they have the same goals. Um, it's really, really inspiring. It's That's probably the best part of it for me. And I think from what I got from people on the floor was they, they did get it. You know, it's like, it's like going and getting a big hug from, you know, this massive family that you run, never really knew you had. I made so many friends from around the world, friends from France and, and Chile and you know, I met kids and dads and their moms and their grandparents and seeing how it's such a generational thing um, is is really reaffirming. And I think that I'm, I'm actually so, so blessed and fortunate to do what I do because I actually get to see that. Um, I would have loved to have been able, been able to walk around and actually go to a panel right, right, or right, see what's right. going, going on on the floor. Um, but... My experience, I think, is is really fabulous because, I mean, I came into Lucasfilm to be a part of the fan community. Like, I did the social media for years, so that's that's my jam. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just a, it's a one of a kind thing. Well, you well, know, so I want to go back to the Lucasfilm thing real quick because every time I notice when you guys are shooting your show. Your next door, it's like it's like a, a bizarre episode of like Mr. Rogers or something because like you have Pablo Hidalgo can just like pop in there, crack a couple jokes, knock down some canon knowledge, and then Dave Filoni shows up, being as, uh, as mysterious as a Dave Filoni can be. What is it like not just shooting the show there and knowing that you can have a Pablo Hidalgo or Filoni, but just walking down the hallways and do you find yourself asking questions that you know? I know he's not going to a- answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. Like, I, what is a conversation like with Pablo Hidalgo or um, Dave Filoni with yourself? I mean, that's that's one of our goals of the show is to to show what it really is like here. You know, Dave or Pablo, they walk through our our offices all the time and just come say hi. And like, you know, we are actually just all friends, so we talk about Star Wars kind of exactly in the same way that you guys do or other fans do. Um, you know, we'll kick around. The, the funniest speculation we've come across or, you know, story things that are coming up. But, um, you know, they, they are really just that genuine and knowledgeable and fun to talk to. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's still surreal, like walking down the hallway and seeing Dennis Marin, you know, yeah, yeah, coming right. back from getting lunch or, um, you know, having Dave, like, say what up to you when you're coming in in the morning. Um, I don't think that'll ever get old. So we're just trying to show that off. That's fantastic. And you do. And it, it does feel like you're kind of sitting there on the couch with you guys. Now, two things coming up here. Big events, obviously, with Rebel Season 3 right around the corner. Oh, I cannot wait for it. It looks so good. And some of the stuff that Dave Filoni has just said about I thought that he, I read an interview that he did with Slash Film talking about how you don't necessarily need Vader right now because we have Thrawn. And I could not agree with him more. It's like, let Vader sit back. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see what happens in Rogue One. But with Thrawn and with the fact that everything that the crew has already gone through in season two, what do you hope to to see? Or what are you looking forward to in season three of Rebels? Oh, see, that's a tough question because I can't. I haven't. Oh man, how do I navigate answering a question like that? If you saw I, it already, I don't want. I don't want you to get in trouble. So if you've already seen it already, then we can we can talk about we can. What should we be looking forward to? I've seen little bits and pieces of okay. it, but you know, after season two, I, I um, I'm really interested in learning more about people's back history. Okay. Um, you know, we don't know much about Sabine, and I want to. Um, but I think my biggest thing is is that I want to know what's up with Kanan. Yeah. Um, I want to learn more about how yeah. you know his connection to the Force is going to be different now. Um, because when Rebels started, I expected Kanan to be my least favorite character. Wow. Why is that? Uh, um, I, because wow. he seems like another, 
you know, another Jedi. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to be too exciting for me. I was really all about Dara, who I still absolutely love. Um, but after, you know, reading the Canon book series and reading Geek Dawn and him develop, um, I'm, I, I absolutely love that character. So I want to see him grow, which, you know, he had a massive misfortune. So I think he can grow a lot from it. Um, you know, obviously Ezra's in a really strange place right now. Right. Um, I don't know. It's just there's, there's so many loose ends and so many um, storylines going right now. And Dave and the team, like, they just turned it up to 11 at the end of last season. So um, it's really exciting. There's going to be some big, big things. I can only imagine because that's what Dave Filoni does yeah. well. He, he uh... thrown in. Yeah, he he sets it yeah. up pretty well for us. I mean, just the little teases, and I like how he pulls and he's he's teased as far as like with uh, is pulling from legends and things that he's already done. So I'm very excited for Rebel season three. Um, before I let you go, Rogue One, the big release this year. What do you what what did you like most about the trailer, and what do you think we can expect from Rogue One as Star Wars fans? You know what I like from the trailer is that it it. I think it set the tone really well. You know, we want to see a war or movie, and it looks like a war movie. It looks timeline wise like it fits. I love all the textures and the dirt on everything. It just it feels like a dark time in the galaxy, and um, I'm kind of see what the war was like for somebody else besides the Jedi. Um, just, you know, I think it kind of makes the galaxy seem a little bit bigger to see these, you know, normal, you know, these kind of average people, these average humans, these average citizens, you know, um, fighting for a cause they believe in. I think that's really exciting. Um, and Gareth's awesome. I think he's going to do a really good job. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's it looks really exciting. It also reminded me... And um, yeah, I, I'm just really excited about it. It just seems like... It's just, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's okay. We're getting a little bit of interference on the uh, on the video, but uh, I I also I agree with you, and I think that what it what it did, what it reminded me of is it was Alexander Freed's Battlefront and the the novel for Twilight Company that he wrote. It really to me feels like that's what I'm about to see in Rogue One, the the kind of band of brothers, but in the Star Wars universe. So I'm very excited for it, and I'm very excited that you joined us today. I again, I wanted to talk to you for a while. I appreciate you joining me, but I have one question for you before you go. We do a little we do. Okay. Movie trivia show here on uh, on the uh, Collider channel, and we're gonna have both Darth Maul, Sam Witwer, and Freddie Prince Jr. Kanan going up against one another in September. Who do you think is gonna win between those two? Is this just Star Wars? No, this is gonna be straight up all movie Here's trivia. Kanan. All movie trivia. Um, I gotta put my money on Freddie. Freddy, Freddy, Kanan's getting the vote. Freddy's a huge, huge movie geek. I also, I know him better than I know Sam. Um, so Sam might be a dark horse, but Freddy has a crazy knowledge of films. So. He, he definitely does. I, I, he definitely does. And I, I would put money on you in a Star Wars trivia battle. So any, especially, especially Kitster knowledge. Ha. <laughs> hey, we're, it's a movement. we're starting a movement. I know. I saw it. I absolutely saw it. And I'm so glad you guys bring acknowledgement to that missed high five. It should be talked about more. Um, We're all here of like the, the random background stuff and the little weird detail. So um, yeah, if you look around the set, you'll find some of our inside jokes. Well, the from time I will to time. Be, I'll be looking for it. Thanks again, Andy Gutierrez. Make sure you check out the Star Wars show. The new episode dropped. Uh, it drops on Wednesday, correct? I don't know if you... Yeah, okay. everyone. Every Wednesday. So make sure you check Wednesday, that out. Wednesday, finish on uh, StarWars.com. Make sure you check it out on StarWars.com. Check it out on YouTube, on the Star Wars channel. Andy, thank you very much. I'm sure you and I will cross paths once again, and maybe when you're in L.A., you can visit us here on the Collider Jedi Council set. Most definitely. Thank you for having me. Bye. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.